2019 Hyundai Santa Fe First Drive Review, Trading Sport for Spiffy. From South Korea to North America, new Santa Fe has a lot to offer. Say goodbye to the Hyundai Santa Fe Sport. For 2019, it becomes the Santa Fe, a two-row crossover that will continue to compete with the likes of the Nissan Rogue, Ford Edge and Toyota RAV4. Three-row versions coming later which will go up against the Honda Pilot and Ford Explorer, will get an XL or some other, yet undisclosed moniker tacked onto the nameplate depending on the configuration. As such, it will have bigger shoes to fill in this increasingly competitive segment. The timing feels right for the crossover to come into its own, and Hyundai has done its best to make sure it pulls its weight against its rivals. With the updated name comes an updated look. In the flesh. It's a Hansuda that seems more SUV than Q, beefed up and boxy, and less overtly elegant than so many swoopy crossover profiles we see today. Its big, chiseled face conveys a Lexus-like gravitas without looking too complicated or polarizing, check out the slight pinch where the cascading grille meets the front bumper. The rising belt line feels modern, while the mostly horizontal roof and almost vertical rear end feel anciently familiar. Maybe a utility vehicle can sate our thirst for wagons after all. Inside, the new Sandal Fe has an air of quality to it, perhaps not in strict terms of materials, but in thoughtfulness. Hyundai does good things with affordable materials, and in general the interior is well laid out, specifically, the center console and its switch gear feel utilitarian and organized. We love the smooth tight feel of the leather wheel in our hand and the crispness of the digital display central to the instrument cluster. The seats are cozy, supportive without feeling cushy, and it was easy to find a natural seating position with little adjustment. Visibility is good, despite what you might think from looking at that high belt line from outside. There's a fixed piece of glass ahead of the side windows to improve side lines at the bottom of the A-pillar. Checking the blind spot. The larger rear quarter window behind the second row of seating helps with visibility. It was only after spending a couple of hours in the cabin that we noticed that there's a lot going on here. The headliner and our tester had a look somewhere between chambray and denim, but felt soft to the touch. The top of the dash was a softish dark plastic, a polyurethane leatherette, to be more specific. Below that, patterned metal trim surrounding the front occupants there was some harder dark plastic. Then the speakers on the doors were jet black plastic formed into a type of wave pattern. On its own, each of these materials is attractive. But take a step back, and consider it all at once, and the new sandal phase approach is all a little much. Make sure you like the way your materials and patterns look together before you sign on the dotted line. The 2.0-liter diesel mill in our Korean domestic tester felt like a really solid little engine, but it won't be part of the engine lineup we get in the States. We'll be offered a pair of gasoline engines, a 2.4-liter inline-four good for 185 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque, and a 2.0-liter turbo 4 providing 235 horsepower and 260 pounds to foot come 2019 we'll get a 2.2-liter turbozole making 190 horsepower and an impressive 322 pound-feet of torque. Despite offering different engines to the U.S. market, all markets will get a new 8-speed automatic transmission routing power to two or four wheels. In our diesel tester, the transmission did its job by staying out of the way. Shifts happen in the background, frankly. We basically forgot about it as we tooled around near the river border with North Korea. We'll be interested if the two extra gears offer any improvement to the already solid American engine offerings, particularly the turbocharged gas mill. Gas mill.